sense.
Jonathan, I'm the. Uh, okay. We have to. I have to use the microphone for the streaming. All right. So, uh, just wanted to welcome everyone um, out to come out here today. Uh, we're excited. You know, we love the fact that so many parents are, are here, guardians. All right, because. Um, one of the things we want to make sure, and you'll, 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 you're going to get a lot of information today. You're going to get bombarded uh, with a lot of information. But again, remember, you, you have time before your children will be here in a few months. All right. How many of you have had uh, have another have a child already here in the high school? Okay, I see them. At, yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. How many of you? It's the first time that you're venturing into the high school world with a, with a student. All right, so let me ask you this question. How does that feel? Give me one word to describe your feeling. Uh, Nerve-wracking, right? Okay, absolutely. So it's not this big, scary place, all right? It's really not, all right? It's, um, you know, our kids here have a lot of fun. We do a lot of great things with them. We do preach excellence. We do preach, you know, that we want them to be the best version of themselves at all times. Uh, but it's not a big, scary place. One of the things I'm going to encourage all of you is this, is that um, when you look at students when they first begin, and I'm just going to be very honest, and I've done it myself as a parent. I have four children, all graduated from here. Parents tend to, that first, those first elementary years, they kind of hover. Helicopter parents, they hover. They make sure that that, that that child is taken care of. Middle school, they give them a little more freedom. High school, some parents tend to now not, no, I'm not going to say not care, but they're not as involved as much. I'm going to say in my 27 years here, I'm 27 years in education, this is the time where you really need to continue to be involved, all right, because this is really going to shape them um, as to what's going to happen in, in the future. So it's almost like, you know, we try to hit kind of rekindle what elementary school looked like in, in for them, and I think the high school students kind of appreciate that. We try to celebrate them as much as possible because that's what our job is. Our job is to make sure our, our kids are successful. All right? So uh, it is not this big, bad place. I don't know if you've heard any rumors about the high school. I can tell you uh, I graduated from here. Any, any Glen Cove High School graduates? Yeah, we're like boomerangs, right? We leave, we come back, right? All right, that's us. That's what we do, all right? But that's why we love this place, all right? But um, it, it's not. You know, don't believe we believe in promoting, and you're going to see all the coordinators are here, the two APs are here, um, all the great things we're doing here at the high school. Um, and it's not that, don't be scared. We are here to help you. You're going to get a lot of information. All right, our doors are always open. Um, we, um, we, we don't, I guess Daisy has the, the friendly school. I don't know if we have a, a tag name. We are, we're family. We really preach family here at, at this school, all right, among the staff, among the students. So quickly, I'm going to jump in here. So this is just a list of people that you, these individuals here, this great group of educators that you're going to hear from today. They're going to kind of give you an overview of what their particular programs are about. Um, what we do have, uh, we have two assistant principals here. We have, and I'm just going to, I don't want to embarrass them, but I'm going to uh, introduce them. Uh, so for next year, actually, Miss, Pr Miss Katie Prudente, so we have two APs. Our APs are in charge of two different grades. So your child's assistant principal will be uh, Ms. Katie Prudente. All right. All right. So she'll be, she'll be in charge. She's the assistant principal in charge of ninth grade and 11th grade. And then next year, um, and then you also have Ms. Padilla, who will be the assistant principal in charge of 10th and 12th grade. So let's give a hand to Ms. Padilla. All right. So quickly. And you're going to get a lot of information. I'm going to go through this really quick. Um, you know, so this school here, this is just, I'm going to go through this quickly. All right, this is my life story. All right, I graduated from Glen Cove High School. Um, always wanted to come back to Glen Cove High School. And, I, and, and, I, and I'll tell you the truth. Here's the truth. The reality is I wanted to be an NBA basketball player. And I used to, you know, I used to pray and, and, and ask and say, listen, you know, if you, if you make me, um, uh, an NBA star, I'm going to come back here and help out in the community. Well, guess what? I didn't become an NBA star, but I'm sitting here now in Glen Cove High School as the principal. And that was just, I just believe it was just my calling. It was what I wanted to do, to come back here. I am, I believe Glen Cove, like us others here. All right, I live here. Um, it's a great place to be. Um, so, 
This is my travels. I went to college school. Any students here went to college school? There you go. All right. Ended up going to middle school. Obviously went to the high school. Started out in a school called IS59 uh, in Queens. Um, I was a social studies slash English teacher uh, there for three years. Ended up going to Walt Whitman High School where I became a dean of students for three years. That's in South Huntington. And then lastly, I ended up being an assistant principal slash dean at Baldwin High School. Um, ended up sitting in my office there briefly um, over the summer. I got a phone call from Miss Santoro. Anyone remember Miss Santoro? Miss Santoro called me and said, listen, we have an opportunity to be an assistant principal here at Glen Cove High School. Are you interested? Now, I love Baldwin, but the dream is always to come back here. All right, so I ended up uh, interviewing. I ended up getting the position, and now I'm here as the principal of this high school, and I love it. All right? So let's quickly go into here. I'm just going to put them all up here. This is what we believe in here at the high school. A lot of school spirit. So a lot, we, we promote school spirit. All right? You'll see it, in the, and it's not just among the students. It's among the adults. It's among the students. Uh, everything is gold, big, red. There's always controversy. Controversy between whether we are, and this goes back to those who are older, the Culvers. How many people remember when we used to be called the Culvers? Well, no, so here, here's, here's the problem. So at one point we were the Culvers. You know, when we would play certain certain teams, they would call us the Covers, all right? Because we had maroon and green and white, we looked like kind of Christmas colors, right? So we were the Covers, the Culvers. We were the. Then we evolved into Big Red, and then the Knights. So our mascot really is the Knight. Well. There's feuding between what we really are. So we compromise and say we're the big red knights. All right, so that's our, our mascot is a knight. All right, um, to our student and staff decorum, uh, we, we expect the best out of students, you know? We expect, expect the best out of them. We know teenagers do make, make, make um, sometimes poor choices. Our job really is just to help them kind of navigate through the world, all right, and make uh, better choices. Because we kind of consider, we call this the bubble. Bubble really is here, we're here to protect you. We're here to keep you in bounds, work with mom, dad, grandma, to keep you in bounds so that you make good decisions. All right? Quality instruction, you're gonna hear the quality instruction from the department heads here in a few minutes about the great programs we're offering. I have to say this, I've been here for 19 years. So we've had, yeah, 19 years. Uh, had the same haircut too, so, you know. You know people say that on age, the key is the haircut. It's the haircut, all right? But we have some great coordinators here. They've done some great things to kind of elevate excellence here. That's what we promote. I don't like personally to like, I don't like the word good. All right, good is good. All right, we want to promote great and excellence here at the high school. And we have a lot of fun doing it. So you're going to hear about quality instruction, community involvement. Your students will be it. Children can get involved just like they're in the middle school. They can get involved in all kinds of things. DECA, all different kinds of clubs, helping out in the community, uh, and in school success. Primary goals, safety is key, all right? Safety is key. We do, not, we do not take anything for granted in this building, all right? Our students, any, our, and our students are really good. The APs will tell you. If there's any issues, our students will come to us and say, listen, you might want to know this or something that is happening, all right? Our security guards are really good. They have a great rapport with the students. We get a lot of intel about but possibly any little incidents. We don't have many incidents here at the high school, so don't believe what other sometimes people may tell you. Um, you know, I, have, I still live here, so people tell me things about what's going on in the high school, and I go, I go, I'm the principal at the high school, so who, what are you talking about? You know, so we, do, you know, it's not a perfect system, just like any high school in America. All right, but we're moving towards towards um, towards excellence. Promoting student achievement and excellence, and that key word is excellence. All right, that's what we're striving for. Right now we have more students, more students than ever now who are striving to be on the principal's list, on a roll, because we're promoting it. We want that. We want them to excel and be the best version of themselves. Uh, we don't want students just to graduate. We want them to continue to grow and find success. You know, kudos to the, to the uh, guidance department. We have more students than ever who are, when the, your child comes in, they can go, they ended up, they, how many kids went on the trip today to uh, take the test? Over 60 students, right? You know, over 60 students went to what they call Taste the Tech, which is at Barry Tech, and uh, they go and they can, they can do different programs. So when they're 11th to 12th grade, they can do, you know, uh, medical technician, police science, 
Um, uh, and then sort of to have it a day here and have it a day there. We're trying to promote that because, listen, the trend right now is that some kids are going to end up going into college. You're not going to college doesn't mean you're not a success. There are a lot of people who did not go to college and now are making a lot more money than people who went to college. And I think if COVID or anything told us that, so what the trend is to give kids more opportunity. All right, and that's what we're going to do. All right? Uh, and, and clearly, uh, we do announcements. We're always promoting positivity, and we want kids to represent themselves in a positive manner at all times. Now, again, we love them. But teenagers, right? It's just a species. It's like, it's like, it's like you know, they, they are. They just, you, you know, when they're great, they're great. And then they have moods. And you're like, wait a minute. Because I, I have four kids. So it's like, you know, how many teenagers are there? Yeah, all you teenagers. Yes, I'm talking to you guys. All right. Then you love them. But then sometimes you go, what are you? And what did you do? You know, but this is what we do. Our job is to help them evolve into good people, great people. All right? All right. So. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Michael Tweed, who is our Director of People Personnel. All right? That's a pretty champ move, William. You can hardly hear him, right? He doesn't listen to directions, but he needs the microphone. How's everybody? Good? Good. Great turnout. Thanks for coming tonight. I think uh, one of the big differences we always kind of joke at the high school is, and I've lived and done this as a, a parent of twin daughters who uh, who was in your situation last year when they entered ninth grade, and I thought I knew it all, I failed. But we fail at parents every day, right? Right. So we always find the level of involvement that is really strong when you have your kids and they're five. And it's amazing, because they're in school, and then high school hits, and they don't talk to you, and they don't tell you things. Wait, that's seventh grade. So it's like, wait, we're really emphasizing. We try to do our best in communicating to all of you to make sure you can be part of events like this and night events. Because we always need the extra set of hands as well. So continue your involvement with PTSA. Continue your involvement with many different activities. I'll tell you, there's a payoff. I mean, I can tell you we had uh, last Thursday, we had Junior Family Night. That's the kickoff to helping junior families get prepared to apply into colleges and what life is like after high school. And w I talked about scholarships. And people are like, ooh, scholarships, free money, right? Who doesn't like that? And I said, would you believe that we have to beg families to fill out scholarship applications. And they're like, nah, that's not true. I'm like, beg. And I said, I'll remind you, at senior college night in September, we hit you with many different things in your emails. So what it goes back to is always have your emails up to date. Always have your addresses up to date in PowerSchool. If they're not, you're going to miss on a lot of things. For example, how many know, how many do you know that your child has a Google Classroom that's set up by my department in sixth grade? Oh, a couple hands. I remind them, because you are invited since sixth grade, that you have multiple family meetings. And you have those resources automatically tied in every year. So when that free money starts floating around, this is my big payoff, right? I'm kind of bribing you. So when it floats around, thinking, you know what? I'm going to take uh, close attention to his Google Classroom and those alerts that Mr. Tweed sends out, because someday it's going to be valuable. Mark my words, four years from now, it's going to be valuable. So. Student transition program. This is our kickoff. Technically, if you've had your eighth grade family meeting with your counselor, you've already had sort of that kickoff where you're actually preparing for classes for next year where you're selecting requests. So why do we do all this? We really want to make sure that the best possibility is to inform you all, to get you prepared. We're not going to get all the pieces in front of you, but we're giving you enough so you can start having clarity exactly what this transition will be. For some of you who've already been through this, you're like, okay, it all kind of makes sense. For some that it's new, it can be pretty scary. But just take the time. Be patient. It's January. This year is going to be over pretty quick. But what we're trying to do is continue kind of helping you assist as you kind of transition to the high school. Think about this. Your children are already taking high school credit classes. They're already getting prepared. They're in those classes now, which will transition into this year. Okay? So that's what we're trying to ease. Also, Mr. Hudson talked about finding success. So that's what we're leading to. And remember, the high school is the safest place to take risks, academic risks. It's OK to fail, because fail means hopefully you're trying, and we'll find alternatives. The support here at the high school, as well as the middle school, is always continuing to assist students to reach that goal in four years, but also beyond. 
building those skills to what lies after them. Okay? So when you have questions, contact my staff. You have questions about academics, you're going to meet one of the co coordinators out here. You can contact them as well. Because it's going to get confusing. And I would have to say the confusion is kind of a benefit because we have expanded the opportunities students can take at the classes I hear. Mr. Hudson talked about Barry Tech. Today we had future aviators on that bus looking and dreaming to become pilots. So part of their year in junior and senior year, our students will be at Farmingdale, some of them, flying planes. Now, I can't think of riding a car with my daughters, so don't try to convince me to get in a plane with my daughters. But that's a possibility. No expense. It's the training they earn. But we're going to talk about how to get there. All right, so how does our transition work? Well, step one, pairing orientation. Welcome. You're at our first step, OK? The other part is eighth grade scheduling. Eighth grade scheduling is what happens in your eighth grade meeting. How many have scheduled their eighth grade parent meeting with their counselor? All right, you all get candy at the end. The rest, please email your school counselor and notify them and get on their schedule. Because in that meeting, you're going to get a lot of resources that prepare you for the transition to high school. A list of all the clubs that are at the high school. A list of all the courses your child can select. You're going to create a four-year plan. So tonight, you're actually going to hear some great information from the coordinators who are going to hit you with a bunch of opportunities for next year, but how those opportunities expand in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. That's the part where I think it might get feel overwhelming. But if you can kind of grasp the idea of what the alternatives are and the options are for next year, that's a great first step. Okay, so make sure you get that meeting planned because that's the f you're going to have many. You're going to have a ninth grade family meeting. When? Da da. Hold on, let me just shift to it. So you're going to have these parts of the ninth grade family meetings are going to be November. You're going to have a tenth grade family meeting in the spring, a junior family meeting in January, and a senior meeting in September. So we're building. We're going along with you. There are five counselors at the building. Um, you will get to understand who your counselor is. It's based on alpha, really, but you'll get that notification when you get the schedule. So if you look at the green area right here, so it says parent mailing. That's something that's sent out by the high school. Also, potentially, I believe we do try to do a schedule release at an earlier time because, of course, August 27th, how do you get students in the building? You bribe them with food. So that's our goal, it's bribery. So what happens is students come in, and they can actually sit down, meet with the building principal and the assistant principals and get to meet who their counselor is, get the schedule, and start navigating around the building. Okay? Then they get some barbecue and enjoy life. And then they can look at the, the locker system, which I'm not even going to go and entertain how the locker system works. I think that'll be a special Mr. Hudson's project for the summer to explain how the lockers work. But, and then we come into the handbook review, which is something that's scheduled uh, the first week of school with, it'll be Ms. Prudente speaking to the students about um, student handbook and other aspects of that first year. And then, of course, you meet the counselor. These are all different things that you're going to have that the student's going to be encountering. So highlight, eighth grade family meeting, check. Barbecue, bribery, check. Freshman family meetings, that's a meeting really for us is to make sure your students taking advantage of the different opportunities because there's a club fair. Like students sometimes feel like once school day ends, they're out. We're like, no, there are other parts of this school life. That's the school spirit that Mr. Hudson was explaining to. There's spirit, there's involvements, there's night events. Be involved. Like, find your niche, find your friends, find other people. Because that's the opportunity to make high school your home. Because those four years, as we all know in life, right, adults? Four years? Blink of an eye. Blink of an eye. And then, of course, a little plug for our spring college fair. Our spring college fair is in now its seventh or eighth year that we started. We actually offer community service hours, bribery, to any families that come to our college fair in March because we typically, or excuse me, in April next year, we have a turnout of about 130 schools. What we try to do with our project is eighth graders will come and they'll get a community service form and they'll have to talk to three college admissions folks who, pre who are prepared for it. And they'll sign off and you'll get three community service hours. What we do at our high school is as you collect community service hours, we post it on the high school transcript. So when the college or an employer get your transcript, they'll say, oh, wow, this student has about 75 community service hours. Also, we award students by collecting community service hours when it comes to graduation. And there is a couple scholarships that are tied to community service. So community service comes in all shapes and forms. No pun, but we do have a form, so you can get your community service hours. But the reason we invite you to the Spring College Fair 
is we want to tell students there's life beyond your face. There's life beyond ninth grade. There's life beyond 11th grade. And that life and opportunity is going to be in that gym starting in eighth grade. Okay. I'm not going to really dive into this because the coordinators are, but this is the high school graduation. So we talked about all the fun stuff, and now we got to talk about kind of like why you're here. So we have the New York State graduation requirements and regents exams. I'm not going to go into detail because also when you go to your Google Classroom for ours, you're going to actually have a better form that's going to walk you through all the different steps you have to go through to graduate from high school. I will tell you, a large percentage of our students go beyond what's required. Like our students are, I mean, you think about it, it's a nine period day eight credits plus lunch. So students are graduating sometimes beyond 32 credits. So the beauty, and I hope you understand, the beauty of what you're really gonna see and hear from our expert coordinators is that it's not just the pathway of requirements, it's the elective opportunities that you can see. And our hope is that your son or daughter can really kind of see other tangibles. Barry Tech is a career tech program that students can have advanced in junior and senior year. We have the Long Island High School for the Arts. We have our outstanding performing arts and music and art that's expanding this year, you're gonna hear about. So you're gonna see that Glen Cove High School really is bursting with opportunities for all the type of students, regardless of the, what talent they have. And I know you could ask your kids, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And they give you this face. I wanna be tomorrow. So it's like, they can't think of what's beyond, but this is hopefully something that they can get there, okay? All right, it's my job to introduce the uh, first academic director or the first coordinator to speak about their academic area, and we save the best for first, all right? So the first one is very talented, and I hope you really are sitting and ready to listen. Okay, Ms. Rizzo can't be here tonight, so I'm doing phys ed. So <laughs> phys ed is required every year, every other day. As long as you're in a New York State high school, you got to be in phys ed, okay? So the beauty of, maybe you remember back in the day, Mr. Hudson probably remembers, phys ed was just phys ed. You came down, you had different options, and you participated in those. That has expanded a little bit. So if you go down to the third dot, you can see phys ed also has different various classes, strength and conditioning, personal wellness. You actually have the general PE, which I discussed. Now you have personal training and fitness. So it's expanded. So you can actually, your son and daughter can pick those for next year. So just remember though, it's an alternative day. So that means just like now, every other day will be some level of physical education. So you have to do that all through the next four years. No way out of it, not even if you participate in the sport. Now, health. In Glen Cove High School in New York State, you have to complete a half credit of health, whether in ninth grade or senior year, but it's gotta be completed, okay? So health covers a variety of topics, um, as you can imagine, you've already, your son and daughter has already experienced some level of health in middle school. This is the last health class they will choose to take. Okay, so they need to complete it. A lot of times we recommend the way ninth grade schedules work is trying to get health done in the first or second year because as you go through junior and senior year, let's say you do, uh, do Barry Tech, which is a half day, or you are bundled up with sciences, which could be a period and a half. It allows you more flexibility in your junior, senior year once you get health out of the way in the first year. Okay. Now there's two types of health classes. I don't expect you to memorize this, your counselor will help you, but they're the same class, they're just titled differently so people can understand when they're offered. So the first health is a semester, so it's either first semester or spring semester. Okay. Health in our times, same health curriculum, it's just every other day. That way we can actually try some flexibility in the schedule. So when Ms. Padilla and Mr. Hudson are putting the schedule together, we can allow students greater flexibility by modifying the classes, and which students will find and which we'll probably speak up tonight. Like you will have science classes that are every other day. So what we'll do in the list of courses in the parent, like if when you go to your Google Classroom for the, for the counseling department and you see parent scheduling resources, when you click on scheduling resources, it'll highlight those classes that are every other day. So you can kind of mentally pick your classes, but the counselor will work with you in the family meeting to actually enter those schedule changes or those schedule for you, okay? All right, so athletics. So we're very lucky to offer a variety of sports. 
One thing I recommend, if your child is an athlete, you probably already did the physical clearances with Ms. Manzione at the middle school. So it's the same process here. If your child has never participated in sports and they want to, the athletic office is down by the gym, but you can always email Ms. Perlman or Ms. Rizzo and they'll be happy to get back to you of what needs to be completed, especially if you're doing a fall sport, because truthfully, when we host our barbecue, sports season has already started for fall sports. So we are around and they're around during the summer. So if you want to participate in athletics at the high school, you can always just go down or reach out to them and they'll make sure you have everything processed and completed, okay? Just on a side note, I know some people are taking pictures. We'll also post this on the high school website for you too, okay? Oh, I just want a cheat sheet. All right, now I get to introduce Mr. Nadell, who is in charge of fine arts, performing, and music. Um, also, he is a special character in a Broadway production, not a Broadway production, but a production tonight. So he's going to be with us shortly, but I hope you really listen because he actually has something really unique that Glen Cove gets to offer regarding our uh, arts and performing arts department. So please welcome him. Thank you, Mr. Tweed. Oh, it's a pleasure to see so many familiar faces, well, many faces from that winter concert we just had at Finley. So it's a pleasure to see so many of you again. Uh, so once again, my name is uh, Lawrence Nadell. I'm the District Coordinator of Fine and Performing Arts here at Glen Cove. And we have a couple of things that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we'll start here. Uh, this year is our first year of offering what's called an IAAP, which is an Individual Arts Assessment Pathway. Your children, students who are entering the ninth grade, are eligible for an IAAP in the second cohort, which is an Individual Arts Assessment Pathway. The pathway is a graduation pathway option in which students demonstrate through a collection of creative works, growth over time, that meet uh, standards in the arts. Uh, students can get an IAAP or an Arts Specialty Diploma, which is an advanced diploma in New York State in either visual art, music, theater, dance, or television. So those are the options, and it gives students the opportunity to prepare them for future, for future professional and educational experiences and opportunities in the arts. Um, so many of our students, uh, this year we have 30 students in the ninth grade who are going for an IAAP, um, and students who will be entering um, next year, this group of students, will have the option to enroll. There is one enrollment period only, and that is when they come to high school. Um, they're going to be able to sign up for IAAP if they wish to study or pursue visual art, music, theater, dance, or television. So first, we have music. These are the different course offerings that we offer here at the high school for music. Uh, if you are currently in chorus with Miss Sullivan in the eighth grade, um, you would move right into mixed chorus. Uh, select chorale is for our advanced students. That's by audition only, starting in the 10th grade. So in order to get into Select Chorale, you have to at least have done a year in mixed chorus to be considered, and then by an audition. Same thing for Concert Band. If you're in Band 8 with Mr. Schmidt now, you would be moving into Concert Band for your first band experience. And then by audition only, Wind Ensemble um, as the next stop. Uh, we also offer Jazz Ensemble that is available to ninth graders as well, which is our jazz band. Uh, we also offer uh, Music Theory and AP Music Theory. We also offer Orchestra. So for those of you who are in Orchestra 8 with Mr. Lippi, you would move on to Orchestra 1 or Orchestra 9, uh, as we used to call it. Um, and then we also offer an elective right now called Music in the Digital Age. Um, most of these courses, uh, once you become, if you stay with our music program for junior and senior years, our courses are now accredited by Five Towns College, and so dual enrollment is um, happening with the Fine and Performing Arts Department, especially in music, so students can earn college credits as they are taking the classes here, as our teachers have become adjunct professors with Five Towns College with our partnership.
Here are some pictures of our award-winning ensembles. Some more pictures. And then we also have our visual arts. In the visual arts, for those people who are interested in studying art, we have different pathways in which students can be immersed. This is, um, uh, most people start with studio art, but with IAAP, you have many options. You can go into a photography tr track, a fashion track, a drawing and painting track, media and art, ceramics, so on and so forth. Um, of all these courses that are right here, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Yep, right here. Advanced Photography, right over here. This is a college course also with Five Towns College, which also offers dual enrollment. Oops. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so cool. Okay, uh, television. Uh, and we have an award-winning television studio up, upstairs on the second floor, um, a wonderful television program in which our students are immersed um, in a professional studio, uh, a, a facility that's really professional up there. Um, once again, students can sign up for television productions, one, two, three, four, obviously in sequence, if you're interested in learning about media or television and producing for television. There's also a broadcast journalism course where they create the, the Friday morning news for the high school and um, also a digital filmmaking class as well. The television production four in the senior year is also dual enrollment. Um, for students who wish to earn college credits while they're um, here at Glen Cove High School. Um, one of our new programs that we're very excited about is our theater arts program. Um, all of these courses are for dual enrollment upon the junior and senior year. Uh, for those of you who are interested in theater and performing, whether it be on stage or behind the scenes, we have many options for students where students can uh, learn about acting and directing and have the foundations of acting and directing, learn about behind the, so behind the scenes uh, design in terms of technical theater, set, lighting, sound, costume, props. We also have a course for playwriting and advanced musical theater where students write their own musical and it's performed in various locations. And we also have a theatrical production lab which began this year for students who actually are performing or working behind the scenes on our shows here at Glen Cove High School. Students are now awarded credit for their participation in those productions. We also have a new program in dance which is very, very exciting here. Uh, most of our dance courses are also dual enrollment and uh, earn college credits from Five Towns College. The first stop would be College Foundations in Dance, where that's kind of like an introductory to dance class, um, where you learn about the different styles of dance. We also have College Theater Movement and Dance. Uh, for this course, most of our students who perform on the stage, this is the course that they would take. Um, college dance choreography, where you learn how to choreograph dances for the stage. And then we also have a new and exciting course called Hip Hop, um, which is a semester long, uh, a semester based class in hip hop dance. All right. So, um, just so you, before we wrap up, um, so there are many opportunities here in the fine and performing arts in terms of visual art, music, theater, dance, and television. Like I said, many of our courses by the junior and senior year are dual enrollment courses. So students can potentially earn up to um, about 15 college credits upon completion of, of graduation if they um, enroll in the fine and performing arts programming, um, which is a great savings for um, for the future. So uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce Ms. Christian Schaefer, who will be talking to you about the English offerings. Thank you, Mr. Nadel. Um, good evening, families. Um, as he said, my name is Kristen Schaefer. I'm the coordinator for English language arts here for the district. I'm going to speak to you about the English pathways that we offer at the high school level. Um, 
in order to graduate from high school in New York State, you need four credits of English um, and an English Regents. So typically, our students um, are taking the English Regents um, in January of their junior year, so when they finished um, the first semester of English 11. Um, however, we do have different tracks for our honors and AP students, which are the advanced English courses that we offer. Um, so if your child is interested in an honors or AP course, we have ninth grade honors, 10th grade honors, 11th grade honors, um, and then those students typically take the regions at the end of their sophomore year. Um, we also offer track for AP seminar um, and AP research, and that's part of our capstone program. When we get into our other AP courses, you'll see we have AP composition, AP literature, and then we also offer um, literature and composition honors in the 12th grade. So both the literature and composition honors as well as our second semester of English 11 honors are dual enrollment courses. Um, and so again, another opportunity for students who would wish to earn course credit through LIU. We also have a number of electives in the English department, um, which allow students who are interested in exploring their passions for reading or writing um, in some more specialized areas. So for example, children's literature, where children, um, they read not only children's texts and study them, but also even write their own. Um, and then creative writing, college film, which is another dual enrollment co course, um, and other options that are available. The QR code on the screen will take you to another presentation that has videos from all of our students who have taken some of these courses. So if you wanna hear from a student as to why you might wanna take English 10H or Lit and Composition, um, their voices will tell a lot more um, than this five second overview of our courses. Um, so when this is posted on our website, I encourage you to take a look at that as well. Um, and to just point out that for the differences in the AP courses, which really start in the 10th grade, and this is something that families often ask, is the seminar and research course that really focuses on engaging in college level research. So there's a lot of nonfiction reading in that course. So if you're interested in studying things like um, why athletes work out five times a week or what is the impact of social media on body image, right? Those are some of the different topics that we've seen in our research presentations. Um, and so students start that foundation um, in seminar in the 10th grade, really engaging in a group research project, reading nonfiction articles. Um, so if you are interested in nonfiction, right, that might be the course for you. If you're interested in reading more literary texts, more novels, then we would recommend the AP literature and composition and even language and composition. Um, students can take multiple courses in AP. We do have have some students who take both AP seminar research and then also take either AP language or AP composition so you're not um, excuse me literature so you're not limited um, and then again the um, LIU courses that I mentioned are offered as optional dual enrollment um, for students who are um, interested and also earn um, college credit through those courses finally I'll just say that the research course that we're offering at the middle school is another way to think about if you are interested in the AP research. And I recommend not only looking at the course guide, um, but again, um, taking a look at the slideshow that we have prepared that really have our student voices um, who can describe the courses. And to follow us on social media um, to see what's happening in all of our classes. In addition, um, you could always reach out to me. My contact information is on the district website if you have any questions or would like to know more um, after or before you meet with your child's um, guidance counselor. So that being said, it is my pleasure to introduce um, Mr. Anthony Allison, who is the um, coordinator for mathematics, who will speak to you about the math department. Thank you very much. I, I like to start off, I just want to introduce myself first off and give you a little of um, 
who I am and because I'm new to the district. So just as your child will be new to the high school, this is my first year here in Glen Cove. But I spent 16 years as a secondary math teacher, and then I spent 12 years as a building, high school building administrator. Um, and I, similar to Mr. Hudson, have uh, kids that are now my oldest is a uh, freshman in high school. And as, as was said, I don't do anything right. I don't know anything about math, even when she brings home what's the difference between a de dependent variable and an independent variable. That being said, um, one of the things that I, I always like to impress upon uh, uh, parents and students coming into high school is your resume, or their resume, I should say, starts in eighth grade. Some of our students are already taking, or some of your children are already taking high school level math courses. So some of the students are already taking algebra, which is the first uh, level of math unit uh, of instruction and the first regents exam that they will take for New York State graduation requirement. As the slide and as Mr. Tweed pointed out, there's a minimum state requirement of three years of math. We encourage here in Glen Cove that they take four years of math. Um, because it's not just about them mating the state requirement for graduation here, we're more concerned about getting them through four years and what does life after Glen Cove High School look like. So some of our courses that you will see that we offer um, are more than just state required courses. Whether it's uh, financial math or whether it's uh, financial algebra or college pre-calculus, it's all about giving them the experience to not only be college ready, but also be career ready. Um, one of the things that you will see is that there are basic courses and there are honors courses. And some of those courses start as early as 10th grade. So for those students that are currently in algebra in the eighth grade, the pathway for them is they're coming in with algebra, successful completion of that, and they either have two options. They can go into the regular geometry course, which is advanced because now they're a ninth grader taking geometry, which is designated as a 10th grade course. Um, or they can, depending on their level of understanding of algebra, they can go into geometry honors. And that same level is across the board. So if they haven't taken algebra in eighth grade, they have an opportunity to either go into algebra or algebra honors, depending on how well they do in eighth grade math. And then they follow the pathway. Um, they could take geometry a second, and then they can go into algebra two trig, okay? Um, if, if your child is not a student that is that overly motivated to sit there for regents exams, there are many options. And it doesn't mean that they need to pass all those regents exams, but they need to pass the courses. And then there's opportunities for them in terms of college uh, uh, credit whether it's uh, advanced placement courses, or as you will start to see, the trend that we at Glen Cove have here is not just giving them an opportunity to get the high school level credit, but giving them the pathways so that they have an opportunity to get college credit for very nominal fees. Um, the average course at college is usually $1,000 a credit. Most courses are minimally three credits. Taking a dual enrolled course here through, we partner with LIU, it's $290 currently for three to four credits, college credits. And the question always becomes, do they have to go to LIU? No. 99% of the time, those credits are accepted at any college. They might not necessarily get that particular math credit or that particular English credit, but it will count as an elective credit. And that is a money savings there whether they're going to a two-year college or a four-year college, or if they're not going to college at all and they're going into the career, those pathways open up many doors for them. Uh, I came, I was in Levittown for many years, uh, and one of the things that, uh, I live over that way, and one of the things that I found very enjoyable was we had a couple of students that went to Barry Tech and did the automotive program, and one of them ended up working at Sun GMC. I have a GMC, and uh, I bring my car in and I see him, and he remembers, hey, Mr. A, how are you? He's making, at the ripe old age of, I think he's 23 now, he's making $37,000. And he doesn't have a college degree. He has a technical degree from Barry Tech in automotive and small engines. I point that out because part of our job is to make them college ready, but also make them career ready. And what you will see in any discipline area here, what we offer as a school district 
is more than just what the course is required or what the state requires. So you're gonna see between either our elective courses or our college level courses, um, there are many opportunities. I'm not gonna go through the specifics because yes, this is four years down the road. As incoming freshmen, the two, th the two choices that you have right now is if they're currently in algebra, they have a choice of either going into geometry or geometry honors. And if they're not in algebra, they have a choice of going into either algebra, algebra honors, and then they can follow that uh, pathway, okay? Um, once again, my information will be on the district website. If you do have any questions, I will be available at the end of this. But also feel free to just reach out to me and give me a holler, or a call, excuse me. Um, and it's my ple pleasure to introduce Ms. Curtis, who will talk to us a little bit more about the pathways in science. Good evening. Um, thank you for introducing me. My name is Miss Curtis and I am the coordinator of science. So I'm gonna talk about our science pathways a little bit. Um, and let me pull those up. Okay, so right now students are in eighth grade Regents Living Environment, which counts towards those graduation requirements for Regents exams. Um, and then we'll be moving to the high school um, for ninth grade. Now, most students next year will be taking Earth Science and they will have the option of taking Regents Earth Science, Honors Earth Science, or for students who, as Mr. Allison said, are taking that Regents level um, algebra, those students will have the option to take AP Environmental Earth Science when those students will sit for both the AP exam and the Earth Science exam. That is a very rigorous course. It meets for a double period every day. So that's something that if your student is taking both living environment, algebra, enjoying the course, ready for a challenge, that's something that you might wanna speak with your student about. Um, and I'd be happy to speak with them about those options as well. Not necessarily, it would look at the rest of their schedule to see what would fit in, um, but it would be a double period every day. So it might, um, for in terms of like elective and other classes, we'd have to see like what the rest of their schedule looks like. Um, so then, so that's really for next year for ninth grade. Um, I'll give a brief overview of what the years to come after that might look like. But again, next year is earth science or that AP environmental earth science. Um, in 10th and 11th grade, students will progress into chemistry and physics. We do have a few options for those courses as well because as we've stated, we wanna meet all of our students at their readiness level. Um, so we do have some conceptual level classes. We have a conceptual level chemistry class, a conceptual level physics class, um, because we do want students to go through those courses in their high school career in addition to our electives, in addition to our APs, because sometimes students think right now, you know, I'm not gonna go to college or need anything for science, so I'm not gonna, you know, take that physics or that chemistry, and then they realize down the line that, you know, they wanna be a computer science major and they have to take a freshman physics class. So we want students to have exposure to all of those core sciences, so we do have them at different levels. So we have conceptual, regents, and honors for um, our chemistry classes, and then we have some wonderful AP offerings, chemistry, biology, psychology, environmental science, and some wonderful um, electives as well that I'll get into. So our goal really at the high school, or my goal is that students at some point take a science class that they love and they find their passion for science and that they're met at their readiness level for science. So these are some of the electives that we offer. We have astronomy, which has been really growing in interest. Students love that class, um, along with all of our other wonderful electives. We have that chemical explorations class, which is a non-regents level science, um, conceptual physics. We have environmental science, forensics, human anatomy. We have mechatronics, where students are using CAD programming and software to 3D print their own designs. Um, we have marine biology, scientific research, where students are studying the biodiversity of different organisms on Long Island. They go out to um, Garvey's Point, and they collect samples, and they run their DNA samples in partnership with the Cold Spring Harbor DNA Learning Center um, and submit their research for competitions, which is wonderful. And we have that progressing all the way through year four because we do have students who take it freshman year and then wanna continue with that and continue their research over time. Um, again, we've got our AP 
um, classes, and we also have a few dual enrollment classes, which I know was already explained in partnership with LIU. So some of those are um, a forensics class, so students have that option of not only earning high school credit, but they can also earn credits through LIU. Um, we have health science and professions, human anatomy, and we actually also have um, honors physics, which is dual enrollment as well, so students can earn college credit through that honors physics class. Um, another thing I wanna point out is that our science classes are, they do meet for one period every day, and then every other day they have a lab period. So science is one of those classes where they meet every day and then for a double period every other day. And then that AP Environmental Earth Science, if chosen as an option, that does meet every day um, next year. So that's kind of an overview of our science courses. In addition, I know Mr. Hudson said it doesn't just stop at the, the classroom. We also love for students to get involved after school. So we do have a Science National Honor Society, which students can get involved with um, after 10th grade. And we have a pre-med society, which they're doing amazing things. They're bringing in speakers, presenters. They volunteer at our K-2 Eco Carnival and our family stream night, so it's wonderful. They're doing really great things. They're setting up peer tutoring. Um, so in addition to our science classes, we always want to extend that outside of the classroom with different volunteer opportunities and um, ways to get involved. So again, for next year, we've got our course offerings there, but if you have any questions, if you'd like to discuss, or if your students want to reach out to me directly, I'd be happy to point them in the right direction and answer any questions they have. Um, but I think that's, and you can follow us on Twitter, um, Twitter and Instagram as well, so you can kind of see into the classrooms and see our different course offerings. So I'm gonna turn it over to our social studies coordinator, Mrs. Poulos. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Mrs. Poulos. Some of you might recognize me as your social studies teacher because I've been here a really long time. So it's beautiful to see you again and I am pretty much an expert in the area of social studies. <laughs> but not this clicker. Okay, here we go. So, New York State requires four years of social studies in order to graduate. There are two Regents exams that your child would need to take in order to qualify for the Regents Diploma. If they do not pass one of those regions, there are multiple pathways, as the coordinators have explained, so that they can graduate. Clearly, to just focus on tonight and freshmen, you have three options entering ninth grade. You can go into our Global History 9, our Honors Track Global 9, or we offer AP Human Geography. AP Human Geography is a rigorous course that gets college credit and is supported by the College Board. So if your child is considering going into there, they should really uh, be prepared and ask their teachers what the requirements are to see if they're able to take on that vigorous work. If they continue on that AP track, we have AP course in 10th grade, World History, AP US History and 11th, and AP US Government. That would be our AP Scholar Pathway. We have honors classes for all the grades, and then we have the general regents track for the students. So four years of social studies, two regents exams. The first regents is in exam is in 10th grade, and the second one is in 11th grade. The electives that we offer are on that board, and I can't see them because I'm getting old. But they're really great. This year we have a new course, Sports History. So if your students are interested in sports, it's a great way to connect US history with sports uh, incidents and exploring that. Another new course that we have this year is the African Diaspora. It is uh, the study of the African history through a global perspective. It's not just about African history. It's really looking at globalism and the impact of different cultures colliding and working together, a very interesting course. If you click on here, you will see our social studies framework and resources there that could help your child while in their social studies courses. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And um, there's another slide we have here. I didn't, okay. So the seal of civic readiness is one of those pathways that I was talking about earlier. 
if your child is really motivated in giving back to the community and enjoys service projects, the seal of civic readiness is one of those pathways that they could sit down and explore as an avenue to graduation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. All the information is on the website. And these electives, some of them are open to ninth graders. Some of them are specific for the upper grades, 11th and 12th. So you would have to look at the course catalog and figure out which are open to the freshmen. Sports history is. Okay, next up, I'd like to introduce our ENL World Language Coordinator, Ms. Giraldi. Hi, I'm Ashley Giraldi, the District Coordinator of World Languages and ENL. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the World Language course offerings that we have. So as of right now, your eighth grade child is either taking Spanish or Italian at the middle school. Um, and as they enter high school, if they've already taken one of those classes, they will be entering into Italian two or Spanish two. You can see the pathway um, that we do offer college credit in both languages. For Spanish, if they um, are in eighth grade right now, through teacher recommendations, student ability, parental requests, um, if your child is a native speaker of the language, they can enter into Spanish Native Language Arts 1 in ninth grade. Um, and after that, you could see the middle pathway, they would go to Spanish Native Language Arts 2, and then they have options for AP as well. If they are not a native speaker, but they've taken Spanish in eighth grade, they can follow the pathway on the left in yellow. That goes um, from level two, starting in ninth grade, to three, four honors, and then either Spanish um, AP literature and culture, Spanish, li um, sorry, excuse me, language and culture or literature and culture. On our Italian side, we're happy to have offered um, Italian one this past year. We brought it back and we will be offering it again next year. And I know at least four or five Spanish speaking students either speak it at home or have studied it in Glen Cove schools that are actually taking Italian one as well. So we have at least four or five students that are currently um, working towards their goal of being trilingual, which really warms my heart. So I always encourage students to, you know, enroll in whatever interests you, especially if you wanted to learn a third language with your time here in Glen Cove. So we do offer through Syracuse University um, Italian college credit as well. When your children are seniors, they will be eligible for the New York State Seal of Biliteracy. That is an additional honor at graduation. Students as seniors will work through um, presentational, intrapersonal, and interpersonal tasks, showing their abilities to listen, speak, read, write in two languages. So it's usually English and a second language of their choice. Most of our students um, complete it in Spanish or Italian because that's what they have studied. But we do have students that perhaps speak Polish that would want to complete it and earn it in Polish as well, and they are able to. This year we actually have two students that are native Spanish speakers but studied Italian. So they will be going for the seal of biliteracy not only for Spanish and English, but Italian and English as well. So it's really interesting. Um, and I taught Spanish for 13 years, so I'm a language lover, and I encourage your children to pursue their language careers far beyond the three credits for graduation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My information's on the website as well. I would like to introduce Ms. Courtney Farrell, who is our Assistant Director for Special Education. Good evening, thank you. I'm Courtney Farrell, I'm Assistant Director of Special Education. You may recognize me from Finley Middle School where I had the pleasure of serving as school psychologist for 15 years. I'm now transitioning into the Assistant Director role where I get to talk about special education as it pertains to the high school. Um, so similar to the eighth grade guidance parent meetings, 
Your annual reviews for those of you who have students or children in special education are underway. They will be happening between January and April and you will be planning what services and programs your uh, child will be having in high school. They do mimic a lot of the programs at middle school. So for example, we have a resource room service, uh, which is five, no more than five students and one teacher uh, for students who need executive functioning skills or are more independent throughout the school day. They can use that resource room service to go and catch up and seek whatever support they need while working on their IEP goals. We also have integrated co-teaching classes, which are those two teachers in, uh, we have four subjects, English, social studies, science, and math, where there's a special education teacher co-teaching with that general education teacher. We have two forms of special class programs, which include a 15-1, so no more than 15 students, and one teacher, and an 8-1, um, which is for our students who are alternately assessed and pursuing life skills. We also have, um, for those students who are being declassified, we have transition support services, including testing accommodations, and offer related services, such as speech and language, occupational therapy, counseling, um, physical therapy, and other services. I did put um, in there, there's a little blip on the bottom. Next Wednesday, we have uh, begun parent universities. So for those who have little ones, next Wednesday at the Finley Middle School, we'll also be doing a CPSE to CSE transition. And then in April, for those in high school, um, we are doing a different transition, really looking at Access VR and other transitional supports for those students once they graduate from high school. Um, I, as everybody else, my phone number and information is on the website. And should you need anything or have any questions, I'm available at all times. Thank you. I now will introduce, reintroduce Ms. Padilla, um, the high school, one of the high school assistant principals. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Bienvenidos. Buenas noches. Greetings to the families at home. Um, thank you for being such an attentive audience. And I really want to give a round of applause to our amazing coordinators for telling us about all our amazing <laughs> offerings in our building. I am a little biased, and I think I told our new coordinator that this was the best school in the district. Shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, but really, I am very excited to see everyone here, and I was very happy to see that we have a few students in the audience. If you're a student, please stand up, because you've been here for a long time, waiting for this moment, the business department. Come on now, let's give a round of applause to our students who are here. That shows a lot of dedication, right? I'm sure you did all your homework before you came to this meeting, right? All right, so I'm going to be talking to you about the business department. So if your student is interested, or if you as a student who is in the audience and interested in some aspect of the business world, we have a few courses here for you. You start out with Introduction to Business in ninth grade, followed by a couple of other courses in 10 through 12. That will include personal finance, college accounting, entertainment sports marketing, and business enterprise um, virtual enterprise, which is a great program. Students have been doing a fabulous job this year, participating in a number of competitions, and have placed really well. In addition to these courses, we also have marketing DECA 1 and 2, which is an after-school club, but you will still get credit. You also get a chance to work with the one and only Mr. McKinnon at the DECA store, participate in a variety of workshops, and again, participate in a number of competitions and I have to tell you and we have someone in the audience yes who has a student who has been participating and placing really well in the deck of competitions isn't it an amazing program Ms. Zilgar Clark come on the program has been growing tremendously and we are very fortunate to offer it here at Glen Cove High School so I am really happy to see all of you here I look forward to working with all of you in September and welcome to our GCHS family and now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hudson Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Ms. Padilla. All right, so as I look around, uh, not, as, as all our wonderful coordinators were speaking, I've kind of just kind of shifted sideways and kind of watched some of your parents, some of the faces, and don't be overwhelmed, all right? I know it's a lot of information that we've given you, but again, remember, it's information for the next four years. So just kind of just, just really focus on what, what's uh, 
going to occur for ninth grade. All right, so I'm going to close out the event here. Um, and ap I apologize, I'm not feeling well, but the show must go on, right? So I'm going to go ahead. What do you expect from Glen, at Glen Cove High School? This is the reality. Family. All right, we are big on that. All right, we are big on family. Uh, these are, they are obviously your children, your grandchildren. When they come to us, we treat them as if they are our children as well. All right, so we love on them. We have high expectations for them. We just want them to be the best versions of themselves. So just a couple of things, a couple of highlights of, all right, clicker. Okay. Okay, so as we talked about, so Glen Cove High School is on the move. Really, we are. We are moving steadily uh, forward, especially now with, with a number of new pieces that we have, with new coordinators, new electives, new initiatives here at Glen Cove High School. We were just awarded the AP School um, Honor Roll in 2023. Ms. Padilla spoke about the DECA Regionals. Our kids are winning. All right, I know that I'm old. That's an old term, winning. They are winning at Regionals in DECA, so in our business program. Students are doing great things. Uh, AP scholars being recognized at a Board of Education meeting. Um, so they are continuing to impress us each and every day. We spoke about clubs that I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Tweed spoke about being involved. We have over about 22 to 23 clubs uh, that kids can get involved in. Not every kid wants to be involved in a sport, a play, or something like that. We have pretty much most things that kids may want to be a part of. Um, and a good thing about here at Glen Cove High School is if your children come in here and they get enough students that feel, hey, we want to start another club, you'll just come down, you'll touch base with Ms. Padilla, you'll fill out the form, and there's a possibility we can start a new club for them. All right, again, is we want to make this their second home. We really just want them to be able to come here, not just perform academically, but just really make this their second home here as well. All right, so what you see here is this is our... Um, uh, Mock trial teen program, where our students here the, on this the top picture are actually down in, in city court. All right, our students actually um, sit on, on trials sometimes and serve as, as the lawyer um, at, at Glen Cove City Court. We also have here, and I don't know if you can see it, we have the Mindfulness Club, who is very active. All right, that's Sophie, the mindfulness dog. The kids love her. The staff love her as well. All right, again, we have fun. Um, you also have here, and I think that that's a Dilgar Clark picture there as well, isn't it? So this is, if you take a look here, this is something cool that we started this year. Um, these students are actually in the DECA shop, and they are doing, print, creating their own T-shirts. That's something that we're beginning to do and to give kids now that skill set so when they walk out of high school, they listen, you know what? They may be able to just walk right into a printing shop, and they have the skills to be able to work there. All right. These are students here performing. This is our, our uh, how, many, how many of you remember the show Fame? Okay, I love that show. All right, it was a great show, but we have Mr. Nadell. The way we envision this, because we have um, a new dance program, a new theater program. We are trying to put all the pieces together so that when students walk in here, they have all kinds of pathways to, 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 to express their talents. Be it, you know, and I kid around with Mr. Nadell who had to leave because he has his own performance, but equating this to that school of fame where kids are showcasing all of their talents here. All right. Uh, so quickly, just as Mr. Tweed spoke about our college fairs. These are just some pictures of things that, you know, just so you understand really what's going on at Glen Cove High School. Um, Spirit Week, again, is huge. Uh, Pajama Day. Uh, these uh, um, Fried Fridays. This is someone who snuck in my office when I was the AP as the mascot. So that is the Knights. So, so whoever it asks, that's the, we are the Knights, all right? Uh, pep rally. So here's, here's, where, here's how, and I've been in three different high schools, all right? Here's how you judge that your kids are great. Here's how you judge it. You take 1,000 students. We have a little 1060, Mr. Tweed. What about 10? About, you take 1,060 students, cram them into a gym, push in another 100 staff members and have a great time without any hiccups. Think about that. Right? That's why we love our students uh, you know, and, 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 and all that they do. So unfortunately, we, we had our pep rally um, inside. Uh, the bad news is only senior parents are allowed. So in four years, you'll be able to come in and participate in the pep rally. All right? But we have our host, our king and queen. 
Uh, it's a picture of uh, probably was a cold night at, at um, for homecoming. Myself, uh, Miss Pedante, Miss Padilla, uh, and obviously the football team. So again, sports is, is huge here. Our soccer team is phenomenal. All right, for those who have followed soccer, um, Nassau County champions in 2022. Um, so they they do really really well. I'm just gonna go through here. How many of you ever been to Trick or Treat Street? It's awesome. All right, it is. It's nice. It's a great event. So again, I'm just trying to let you know that it's just more than just the academia. Our kids are coming here and doing a lot of great things and helping out the younger kids in the community. All right. So this, here's where I talk about the adults. We're, I, I think the beauty of being an educator is that you have to also have that kid spirit continue in you, with you. So we really get into it. If you take a look here, this is the main office. We dressed up like, I don't know how they, how they got, you know, I don't even know what I am. I don't even know if you what. I don't know. I must love them, but I dressed up as, I don't know what that was. Was I a caterpillar? Okay, I was a caterpillar. Listen, I took one for the team. I figured I'll throw on the outfit. All right, but we just, we just have fun. We really just have fun, all right? Uh, this was phenomenal. This was the phys ed department, all right? So I should have posted this because another school posted it, and they, it went viral. But this is our phys ed department um, who um, made themselves look like trophies. Again, the students really get into it during Halloween celebrations. This is something we call Friday, Saturday Night Alive. All right, so every other month, or, you know, we try to have, we open up the gym to have, give students something to do. All right, I grew up here in Glencove High School, in Glencove. Sometimes there's nothing for kids to do on the weekend. So every so often we'll open up the gym, they'll play ping pong, kind of like old school, old fashioned games, board games, you know, try to get them to put the phone down. All right, because everyone knows that the phone is, is their addiction. And some adults, too. All right? All right? So, all right, so that's called Friday, Saturday Night Alive. Um, again, we did the Laramie Project. We have a phenomenal, phenomenal, all right, music program. All right, by far. I would rank our program with any, any school in the country. Why do I say that? Because our select chorale has, ha has sang in front of the President of the United States the Pope, Carnegie Hall, all right? So they do a phenomenal job, and they're always, always, in any competition, and they're, they're always coming in, you know, getting a lot of accolades, all right? Um, again, if you look on the website, if I'm an eighth grade parent, look at our website. You can kind of see what, what, what things are, are happening, um, kind of give you a preview of what, what your child's going to go through uh, for next year. This was great. This was pre-med students spreading cheer. So our pre-med students, and we, we, we want to produce good people, you know. Our pre-med students went down to the senior citizen place and actually, you know, spoke with some of the elderly uh, uh, people, um, gave them cards just to spread some cheer during the holiday season. And that's, that's we want them to have a balance of being a great person as well as, as being intelligent. All right, so here's, where, here's another thing. Glen Cove went international this year. It went international last year. Um, so we have a young lady by the name of Natalia Monsali who actually went to uh, Abu Dhabi. Fashion is her thing. All right, so she flew to Abu Dhabi. She participated in what they call the Junk Couture Finals. We also last year had a German cultural exchange program. Our students um, were in Mr. Vasquez's class, and they exchanged... They, they had an exchange class with students in Germany. So we're always trying to kind of expand our students' horizons, um, and we continue to do that. All right, this is our students going to see Sweeney Todd on Broadway. They always have a great time. And now, again, it's exposure. So the running joke is this, is that, and I don't want to offend anyone. I, I live here. I live here in Glen Cove, so I don't want to offend anyone. But a lot of times they say, Glen Cove people don't go beyond Northern Boulevard. How many people have ever heard that? All right, right? So we want them to go beyond Northern Boulevard. All right? So we're always doing field trips, all right, getting them into the city so that they go beyond Northern Boulevard. We know Glen Covers are like boomerangs. You throw them, and they come back. All right? So again, it's about exposure. All right? All right. So we do funny things here, Bow Tie Tuesday. The kids get into it. I think I'm probably most, most into it, but, you know, it's just something to do, just to expose kids to different 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 things all right um, I'm gonna leave you on with this please stay involved this is not the, this is the crucial time there's a saying 
Um, you know, they would tell me, my kids, are, my kids have gone on, graduated in college, and they would say, you know, things like, um, you know, small kids, small problems, big kids, big problems, you know? We don't want to delve into problems, but we really, they really need you. They need you more than ever now because of distractions that are out there, um, you know, and, and it's not it, distractions that are on the web, things of that sort. So really stay involved in your child's life. We have a great faculty here, all right? Everyone here, um, every, you, you can always reach them. They do a phenomenal job. If you really want to now see what's going on in the high school, visit all of their Instagram pages. Visit the high school Instagram page. You'll get a preview of, okay, this stuff is really happening. You know, these kids are really doing, you'll get pictures of students, what they're doing in their science classes and English classes. Um, and again, as, as all the coordinators said, feel free to reach out to us. Feel free, even during the summer times, you know, myself and the assistant principal sometimes, you, your kid may be shy. They may want to do a tour before the tour. We're here to support you. All right, we are totally here to support you. Um, for parents, get involved with MPAPA, PTSA, Booster Clubs. We couldn't operate this building without them. They do a phenomenal job for us, and it's a way for parents to be involved and have an understanding of what's going on here. Here's the beautiful thing. Your children will, so, I thought, I, Victoria, I thought you were going to talk about the science labs. All right? You want to, this is, look, watch, watch, watch her just glow when we start, when I say science labs. I know. <laughs> right? So for those who graduated from here, myself included, those black tables that have things etched in them and it's better now, they are being removed. Come next year, all things going well, they will have state-of-the-art science labs. State-of-the-art. All right, you have already seen the, um, the turf field. We will also have, and for those who graduate, remember there was, there's still two cafeterias. Next year, if all goes well, your children will walk into a building as one cafeteria, state-of-the-art cafeteria. So things are exciting. Yeah, wow, right? Right, right? Exactly. So um, some great things are going on. We've got to thank the Board of Education, Dr. Rihanna, all the central administration. Uh, but we're moving forward. And feel free to, to um, we'll end it on that note, but feel free to come down if you have any questions. Okay? Have a great evening.